Now that you have your website, you want to continue to organically grow this over time. So that means adding new pages, and adding new blog post articles. Now, imagery is a great way to go and help your content become more attractive to the, v the visitor and the reader. Imagery illustrates a topic that you're writing about. It can capture the attention and imagination of your reader. It helps to break up the content on a page so it may not seem so text heavy. Now, you can get imagery online in a variety of places, and some of it's free and some of it you have to pay for. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of quick examples, like Google, common search engine. If you typed on, say, you wanted to look for Tokyo street scene and did a search, you typically get pages, but if you click on this little images link at the top left, now the search is specifically on imagery. It's not the content pages. So here's some great examples you can look at, and it's nice the way it's ordered. You can see, um, you know, basic description, how the keywords are fitting what you searched on. You'll see resolution dimensions. So these are typically pixels, 600 pixels wide by 450 pixels high. You can see the format. Is it a JPEG? Is it a, a PNG or a GIF file? It depends on what you're looking for, but at least you, now you can begin to get a sense of what's out there and available. And if you find an image that's very attractive to you, by looking at the pixel dimensions, you'll know whether or not you'll be able to fit it within the content of your page. So for example, you always want to get as large a resolution as possible, a large dimension as possible, and scale that down, rather than taking something that's smaller and try to scale it up, because it won't look as visually neat. Um, Ask.com is another great site to use, and again, you can sort of do an image search specifically to get image results, and the images that show up in the results are organized into, into various types and formats and colors. So, uh, you know, if you don't find something that you like on Google, go ahead and check Yahoo or Ask. Now, you can also go to a site like uh, Wikimedia Commons, which is a great site because um, basically this is where authors of work who, who decide to share it freely will go and upload it in here with a sort of with a defined usage policy. So now if you did this search that we talked about, Tokyo Street Scene, we find an image that we like here. We can go and and actually find out who the author is and cite that person and that source accordingly. Because you have to think about, you know, the person who took the time to to take this photography and put it out in the in the the public for common use, you want to go and at least give that person credit. You know, you, when you're publishing an, an image on your site, at least cite the source. If you're not paying for it, then a link back to that originating source or author is doesn't cost you anything, and um, it's much appreciated. And it's being a good, polite med medicine. <laughs> so here, when you look at this image, you can get a, a nice resolution uh, version of it. You find out who the original author was, who you can credit that person with a link back to their site. Um, and you can verify here that this image is allowed for sharing and reproduction. And you know you can always read the terms to find out exactly how you're supposed to at attribute or what you're not allowed to use it for. Same thing with Flickr. Flickr is another site where people are more commonly sharing their photos. Now, this is, a lot of these photos are shared from mobile devices, so phones with cameras, they're uploading images into their personal family libraries and whatever they found interesting. You should always go and look and see um, how people are citing the use of their imagery. So maybe they might say that they don't want to go and, and share it, or maybe they say, please feel free to use it. Just, um, again, link back to the profile page. Now, if you want to step it up a little bit further, you could go to a professional photography site like iStock Photo. I'm not. I'm just using this one as a reference because it's cheap. I'm not necessarily endorsing them, but if you do a search on here, you'll find hundreds of images associated, and you can actually buy them really cheap. Quite often, um, you can get an image for as low as a dollar, and you don't have to go and cite the author when you're paying for it. So that's a nice feature as well. Anyway, I hope these resources were useful to you. Please let me know if you have any questions. Visit reinhardtgroup.com.